Hello guys and welcome to another episode of the Montreal Canadiens franchise series. In the last episode we took on the draft and the first part of free agency the first couple days. We're on July 6, 2023 now. We won the Stanley Cup a couple months ago but we have to retool our team like I said in the last episode. Uh, we were right against the cap so in order to be able to sign um, our young players such as Paul URV, Kyle Foot. Kakanyemi and Jake Odinger, we needed to make some tough decisions. And some of them were trading Brendan Gallagher, which was really tough. It was definitely controversial and maybe not popular amongst every one of you. But it needed to be done because Gallagher was an aging forward. He was he went down to an 84 and he was making over $5 million a year. And then we also traded Dougie Hamilton, or arguably our best defenseman as far as um, offensive defensemen. So we had to trade him. And instead, we signed, I'll show you quickly, we signed Jake Odinger. Uh, we brought him back, and we also signed, uh, where is he? We signed Bode Wild. I don't know why it's not on here. Let me see. Player signing. Yeah, player signings, actually. Where are we? We signed Jake Odinger, and where is Bode Wild? Okay, Bode Wild's not on here, but we did sign. Oh, no, okay, it is. Mont Montreal added Bode Wild uh, for a six-year deal. Let's see. Okay, let's see from the newest to the oldest. So Toronto signed Artem and Nisimov for some reason. Boston signed Slater Cuckoo. Uh, Boston signed Chris Letang as well. Detroit added our old defenseman Oscar Clefbaum on a five-year deal. Tampa Bay signed Mike Mikel Granlund. Uh, Jonathan Uberdo went to the LA Kings. So this was a really good free agency. Ottawa signed Ryan O'Reilly to a one-year deal. St. Louis added or brought back Jake Allen. I think he was still on that team. Chicago added uh, Hayden Fleury. Hayden Fleury was another uh, player that I might, was maybe looking to get. He wanted almost $7 million, which was more than Dougie Hamilton uh, made. But the, the problem was that Hayden Fleury wanted uh, too much money for what he brought to the team, in my opinion. Hayden Fleury probably got around 20 to 30 points a year, which wasn't good enough, in my opinion. And he wanted $7 million. So I thought he was just mainly a player that was really high overall, but his advanced stats weren't there. He wasn't producing. So I decided not to take a chance on him. And we decided to take a chance on Bode Wild, who we didn't really have too much knowledge on. Uh, but yeah, we signed him. Uh, Nashville added Sean Monahan. New York added Shane Goss's Bear. Minnesota added back Matthew Dumba. Jack Hughes went to Anaheim which is crazy that uh, Vancouver can sign him. Alex Wenberg went to San Jose. The LA Kings added Nathan McKinnon. So Nathan, Mc Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Uberdo went to the LA Kings in this free agency. Uh, these other guys. Eric Comrie signed with the Arizona Coyotes. Philippe Dano went to Vancouver. Adam Lowry went to Vancouver as well. Let's see. Alex Kalorn went to Columbus. Pavel Buchnevich went to uh, Washington. Brett Conley as well, and Kevin LeBanc. Brady Kachuk went to Toronto. That's crazy. On a two-year deal, Andreas Ath Athanasiu went to uh, Vancouver. Buffalo added JT Miller. Oh, my God. Romanov ended up going to Washington. So good for Romanov. Timo Meyer went to Buffalo. Damon Severson went to Carolina. We added Bode Wild, like I said, and then these other two guys that I don't know about. So that's that. So now... I want to quickly show you how much money we have. We still need to sign Cal Foot, Cock and Yemi, and uh, what's his name? Pulley Arvey. So we only have about $7 million in cap space, 7.4 to be exact. Cock and Yemi wants about 8.75. So we still need to trade some more players, guys, because uh, Pulley Arvey is going to want about three and Cal Foot about three as well. So. The player that I uh, targeted to trade is going to be Max Domi. He was definitely a lot of help for us in this playoff run, but we're going to have to say goodbye to Max. And a couple players that I saw were... Let me quickly see here. Was it on... I think it was on Columbus, the first one. Forwards. It wasn't on Columbus. Maybe it was Calgary. It wasn't Calgary either. Carolina. 
It was Caroline, okay. So we have the choice between S. Raycroft, medium elite player, Skylar Raycroft. His role is a minor league scoring forward right now. Medium elite potential. I think he played in the AHL this year. Did fairly well for 13 games. Uh, I don't know where. Like he did, he played 2019, 2020, which is when he was drafted, I believe. But then he didn't play at all until 2022, 2023. But he did, he did fairly well this or last year. Six goals in 13 games, 33 shots. I was looking at his advanced stats as well. He has 11 giveaways compared to eight takeaways, so not terrible. Takes a lot of shots. So this guy's an option. The problem is that if he was to replace Max or yeah Max Domi, he's only about in the 70s overall. And I don't know if he's going to jump as high as we need him to be uh, right now if we want to stay competitive. So that's an option, medium elite. Uh, his value is quite a bit as well. So that's one option. And then from the Edmonton Oilers as well, we've made a lot of trades with the Oilers. But he would be another player, Karostin. Top six high. Valerie Karoskin, fourth line forward. He's already 75, so he most likely will go up. I think he played in the AHL last year. Yeah, he did pretty good. Seven goals, 36 assists. So he's definitely a passer of the puck. 23 giveaways to 36 takeaways. So he doesn't give the puck away. He actually is really good taking the puck away. So I think I'm going to go for him, to be honest, because his trade value is not as high as these other guys. And the main reason is because uh, these guys have already a lot of good skilled players like Dreisaitl, McDavid, Vernarski, Yamamoto. And I think they need some uh, a little bit of uh, sandpaper. I know Domi is not really a grinder or anything like that, but he's a skilled gr player that can play the grindy style. So I know he's a playmaker, I believe. So yeah, they have a lot of cap space, so... They would for sure. They're hopeful, so they don't want to wait on players like Karosin to get better. They wanna, they want, they need help right away in those two, top two lines. And I think McDavid and Domi can do uh, some damage together. So I'm gonna offer McD uh, Domi, and potentially I was thinking a first rounder, guys. Let's see here. We still have four first rounders. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. What am I doing here? I believe we do have f four first rounders. Yeah, we do exactly. Okay, so we have f four first rounders, one from New Jersey, one from AZ, one from Montreal, and then one from the Washington Capitals. So I'm thinking of offering ours. This may go through. They don't even want our first rounder, though. So, but let's just try it. A first rounder. When was Karoskin picked? Karoskin, sorry, picked. Uh, first, yeah, first round, third overall. So he's a stud. Trade rejected. Uh, your, off your offer is woefully insufficient when I consider what you're asking in return. So let's see if we can offer them a prospect as well. Maybe that can entice them. Something that they want. It looks like they want a lot of D-man. Yeah, they definitely need help on their D-core. Uh, a couple 72 players. Medium top fours. We have a couple medium top fours. Eklund is another player that I traded for. Mats Eklund, Baldwin, Calfoot. If I add Baldwin, he's 78, fourth line forward, Brian Baldwin. Or I have a lot of uh, also medium top four, so I can try and sign a couple of these guys. Pritchett or Couturier? Pritchett was picked second round. Couturier was picked second round as well, so... They're virtually the same players, so I think we we have uh, we can take the luxury of trade one of those two guys. Let me see their stats, individual stats. So puck skills, shooting. This guy's more of a physical player, Pritchett. Couturier is more a a yeah. Original Pritchett is more of a defensive defenseman, and this guy is more of a two way guy. Eighty five defensive awareness, eighty four. I think I might as well. Do, I think I'm going to trade Reginald Pritchett because look, he, I think he's so highly overall because he has a good shot and re, he's really good defensive or not defensively physical. But if you look at his defensive stats, it's only three stars. 81 defensive awareness. Stick checking is decent and block shots are definitely good. But his offensive awareness and defensive awareness are not where uh, Ter Terrell Couturier are. So I think I'm going to trade uh, 
Reginald Pritchett as well. A first round Pritchett and Domi for Kroston. I think Kroston may be able to play on her second line this year. If not, we're going to bring up Pugliarvi to her second line. I think this may go through. Let's see. Trey rejected. Okay. So you know what? I'm going to revisit this. I also wanted to see if there was any um, players with potential in the free agency. I may be able to get a couple of those guys. So let's see here. Because we only have, we don't have that much. So yeah, you guys see here, a couple low elites. Might as well sign them. Yeah, D. Coligiavo, Denisenko as well. Oh, Denisenko is one of those. Uh, sorry, that's, that's not one of the players that I'm looking for. Mezonev as well. So we can just um, keep it going here with um, some of these players. Cole Lind. Can we sign Cole Lind for a or AHL team? Let's see. I'll just sign him for one year, Cole Lind. Yeah, why not? Wouldn't we don't we wouldn't have to give up anything. So let's see. Anything else for top six forwards? Uh, Brendan Gould. No, he's a low top four. So who is this? S Terry, medium top nine, Asplund. I'm going to sign a couple of those guys, too, because we basically need to sign them. So, Oh, no, this guy, Asplund, wants a little too much money. This guy's 80. M. Fromm, 81, apparently, but I don't think it's... This is legit, so actually I'm not going to sign him. We need some young guys around the 20-year-old mark. Rosa. M. Rosa. 20 years old, why not? Let's sign him. We, we only have 33 contracts, so we need some bodies here. Uh, and then let's see for goaltenders. Let's see, two-way. We don't really have anything too good. Let's see for overall. Do we know any of these guys overall? Lukanen. Yeah, why not? Let's do Lukanen for AHL. Two-way, one year. Luko Uko Lukonen or whatever. And then home as well, maybe. Couple young guys. Well, this guy would be an entry level contract, so I don't really want to give him up yet. Yeah, no, Lukonen might be perfect actually for us. Uh and then uh, we will also play a Frolov. I think we have a couple. Actually, let me see who we have for goalies for the NHL and the AHL. I want to take it a little bit easy because I wanna Make sure that I have everything perfectly uh, planned. So we have Price and Odin during net. Top two goalies. Uh, Booth, he hasn't signed yet. Helvik hasn't signed either. They were both 26th. Medium backup. So they're basically the same as the guy that I just tried signing. So I may as well just ship both of these guys. And try to sign. Uh, try to get a draft pick for both Booth and Helvik. Why not? So I'm going to do that for sure. D-Man, we have so far Lindholm, Wild, Honka, Smith, or Teo Fleury. No, not Fleury. Uh, maybe Eklund or um, Foot. We have Fleury, Eklund, Niku. That's three right there. Four, five, six. So we're pretty good. We just have to sign. I mean, we just have to trade a couple of these guys because they want too much money. Uh, Wolfredson. Sebastian Wolfertson is an AHL guy. Uh, Couturia Pritchett. So we're, even Austin. We have a few players that are graduating this year into the AHL. So we have we can most likely trade Myers, Siegenthaler, Lozon even. So that's the um, defenseman. And then for forwards, one, two, three. That's our first line. One, two, three. That's our second line. Wait, yeah, I guess we still have to sign Kokaniemi, sorry. So Kokaniemi would be our second line. Glebov, Lundstrom, Laxanen would be your third line. Baldwin, Dubnik, and Nicholas Ra would be your fourth line. Hopefully we can get a, maybe a fourth liner. I think we still have to sign, yeah, we still have to sign Pogliarvi actually, so Nicholas Ra wouldn't be here. But we have Baldwin, Brian Baldwin, another player that is looking to graduate this year into the NHL. And even Brenda Dubnik as well, 78. Hopefully that we can get some growth out of both of those guys. 
Nicholas Ron, William Bedden, we most likely won't use. Kakanyemi, Pugliarvi, Cam Hillis, Ryan Suzuki, Olofsson. This is the guy, Rick Brune, Kale O'Brien, Caleb O'Brien, I mean. So those guys are still pretty young, so they haven't really grown. Christensen, so yeah, that's that's about it. We need some help on our, um, what's it called? We need definitely need some help on our top three AHL lines. Uh, Khalil, Piero, Zabotel is another stud. Uh, so we have a few medium elites, even this Owen Shrimp guy. So yeah, it's looking good for prospects, especially after winning the Stanley Cup, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. What else do we have to do? So yeah, I just signed a couple of those guys. I'm wondering if I should. Yeah, I'm just going to simulate a couple more days. Because I don't, I'm not gonna sign any of those big name players. I think uh, Denisenko's here though. He would be per 4.8 for five years. How did he do? Let's see how he did last year. 33 goals. So he actually puts the puck in the net. Takes a lot of shots. I think too, right? Let's see. Shooting per yeah, 285 shots. So this guy takes a lot of shots. Might be a player that I look to get to be honest Gregory Denisenko he was actually one of the players I was offered to us I remember low elite I remember he was one of the players I was offered to us earlier in the in this franchise mode I think it might have been last year even this year during the trade deadline but um yeah so we have to sign Paul Yarby who wants 4.5 now for two years 83 and then Calfoot, who wants 2.6, so that's going to be 7 million right there. And then we still have to sign Kakanyemi for 8.7. So this is going to be, this is really tough, guys. This is really tough, to be honest, because we're right against the cap space. So even if I trade Domi, I don't even think we'll have enough money. But trading Domi is something that needs to happen, so... I'm going to I'm going to build a trade and I'll bring you guys back once I have something ready. So give me a second, boys. All right, guys, here trying to trade again for Croston. I think we um kind of got a couple low elite players there. We tried signing them at least. So I'm going to include Justin Austin and uh LaRose who's a top medium top 6 Jaden LaRose. I think we picked them up last year in our first round. But we need to give up something to get Croston. So let's see if this would go through. We the trade value is definitely on our on our side so this should maybe go through but they don't really want it so uh it's not where it needs to be at all so the last thing that i'm gonna do here i think is give away <clears throat> sorry um the highest value first rounder i think arizona's is the highest or new jersey they're about the same so i'm gonna include arizona like, this is a lot now. This is a lot of value on our side. Um, I think I feel like I'm overpaying, but we would definitely save up a lot of money. Uh, Karostin is just entering his entry. He says three more years on his entry level for some reason. Yeah, why, why does he still have three years? Even though he played last year in the AHL. I don't understand that, but he still has three years. Let me see if I can maybe get a second rounder in return or something. So our, the trade's still on our side. We drop down one one round. Uh, the Yeah, the Arizona Coyotes one is really good. Let me actually start with my first round, to be honest, now that I'm second-guessing myself. Or even Washington's second round, because, yeah, Washington's... Let me include mine. I'm banking on us having a really good season, so let's try this. Trade rejected, okay. Like, I don't want to overpay too much, though. Like, we have a low elite, medium top six. A couple, two, two medium top sixes and a low elite for high top six. Let's see. If we just make it like this, would this go through? I think trades on our value on our side. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, no, my bad. I didn't know that we had offered that. Uh, so if we offer one of those high... High... um. High picks. Let's see. Our high pick, uh, Arizona, Austin, LaRose, and Domi for Karostin in the second round. Let's see if this would go through. Still wouldn't go through. It's too far off. Like, are you kidding me? Look how much. I'm going to take off the second round pick. If this doesn't go through, I don't know what else to do. Let's see. Hopefully this goes through. Trey rejected. 
It's too far off still. Are these guys crazy? Oh my goodness. All right. Um, you know what? I'm going to advance a couple days and rethink of this. Hopefully a couple of those those players that we wanted are back. New Jersey's first round for Josh Manson. No, thank you. Uh, actually, you know what? You know what I'm going to do first and foremost? I'm going to trade those two goalies that I tried um, signing, but they won one-year deals. Let's see. These two goalies here, you guys remember? That two RFAs, Booth and Halvig. Look at Price's trade value. Holy crap. Is he going to drop? I just realized this. Is Price going to drop now? Wow. 10.5 million. Is he going to drop? He only has three more years to go. We're praying that he doesn't drop, but he may drop, to be honest. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Boston wanted those two goalies. New York wants it as well. Let's see. Let's try and trade in New York. them to New York, I mean. Uh, for maybe a second, a third round pick. The trade's on our side. Uh, New York would have too many goalies. Okay, so they already have too many goalies, so that's kind of annoying. I need a team that doesn't have too many goalies. Yeah, maybe actually these guys. Boss, I mean, uh, what's it called? The Ottawa Senators don't have too many goalies. They only have 33 contracts. So this would go through Booth, a backup for a third round pick. Would this go through? Trade rejected. Okay, so let's we'll just get a like late round picks or something. Fourth. Yeah, fourth. Let's try fourth. Come on now, give me something, Ottawa. Trade rejected. All right, a fifth then. I just want them to get up. I just want to get something for these guys because I don't want. I'm not gonna sign them because they want a f actual contract. Okay, so we got Booth for a fifth round pick. So we got another asset here. Let's also remember that these guys that we have here on our team. Um, no, I'm sorry. Let's, let's remember that these late round picks can turn into something really good like we've seen uh, in the past with our drafting. So Helvig for a fourth, I think. Let's see a fourth and a fifth. Let's try this. Fourth and a fifth for Helvig. Trey rejected. Okay, a fourth then. Trey rejected too. Okay, so it's going to have to be another fifth then. I think Helvig is younger, but that's why I was trying to get a little more, but this wasn't good enough. Trey rejected as well. Are you kidding me? Okay, so I'm not even going to do business with you then. Do these guys have enough? They have too many goalies? No. Okay, perfect. Fifth round pick, Trey rejected. Are you kidding me right now? A sixth then? Like, I just want him to get off uh, our books here. Trey rejected. Holy crap. Why do you even want him then? You know? Uh, let's see. Boston was another team. Hopefully they don't have too many goalies. A fifth. Let's try this. Trey rejected. Okay, a sixth maybe then. Jim Helvig, come on, man. Why are you worth so little? Trey rejected. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's see who else wants Jimmy Helvig. Uh, New York wants it again, so let's see. New York's fifth round pick. Oh, yeah, New York has too many goalies. My bad, I knew this already. Philly, all right. Philly, seventh round pick. Would you do that? Trade accepted. All right, you guys are freaking cheap. They didn't want to give us a sixth round pick, but whatever. So we got a couple more assets here. Let's simulate a couple more days. So Jesperi Kakanyemi has, holy shit, Jesperi Hasmini has been tender an offer sheet of $10.36 million a year for six years. These mother, oh my God, the Florida Panthers just ruined our plans here. You don't have the necessary uh, compensations. So what we're going to need to do is trade Domi right now, guys. They would give us a 2024 first round pick, a 2025 first round pick, a 2024 second round pick and a 2024 third round pick. That's crazy. That's because it's over $10 million. So we have to say, remind us in six days. 
Uh, S. Terry accepted. Rosa accepted as well. Mizonov accepted. Koyakovo accepted. Okay, so those assholes of Florida have literally just offered Kokaniemi that much money. We don't have the cap space right now. So what we need to do is trade right now Max Domi. I'll offer them I'll offer the Oilers two first round picks for Karostin. We definitely need Karostin, guys. Or let's see. Can we even trade for this other guy here? Who where was he? I think he was on the jackets, right? Forwards. No, he wasn't on the jackets. He must have been on Carolina Hurricanes. Raycroft. Medium elite. 70. Yeah, we don't know what he is, though. That's the thing. Six goals. He's worth more than uh, that other guy, though. So let's just try Edmonton again. Hopefully they're willing to give him up. Oh, man, Edmonton is just busting my balls over here, guys. All right, so... Yeah, New, let's put New Jersey's. Let's try New Jersey's. And then put a couple medium elite players here or something. Or low elite or something. Do they want any anybody here? Rookie skaters? No, sorry. Skaters matching the block. Who do they want? Pritchett. So they do want Pritchett. So let's add Pritchett. And that's it, actually. Pritchett. And then we'll add that Austin guy or whatever. I think this might be might be something that they accept or La Rose or Austin. Austin. Yeah, Austin. Let's do Austin. So the, the value is definitely on our side now. Pritchett, Austin, Domi, and a first for Karostin. Let's see if this would go through. Trey rejected. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I don't want to overpay, like I said, but this is like a pressing matter now. Because we need to sign a Kakanyemi ASAP, so. La Rose. Let's put La Rose on here. Come on now. Why didn't it work? So La Rose here. Give me one of your crappy players. Sam Gagne, that's so crazy. Sam Gagne is still here. We'll just grab Sam Gagne maybe or... Yeah, we'll just have Sam Gagne come back. So let's see. Would this go through? Karostin, Pritchett. Yeah, sorry, no. Karostin and Gagne for Pritchett, Domi, first round pick, and LaRose. The value is definitely on our side. Trade accepted. This seems like a sweet proposal on our end. Thank you. So we finally got some cap space now. I think we may have about $10 million to sign him now. Let's see. Uh, how do we do this? It's the first time I ever get a offer sheet. So, where is he? Is he gone? I said remind me in six, six days. So, he shouldn't be gone. Let's see. Maybe contracts, view contracts or something. Oh, pending, no, offer sheet compensations? No, this is going to tell me what it is. No, 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 no. Uh, view contracts. I think it is view contracts, right? Has to be. Come on now. Where are you, cocking at me? How do you? How do we even do this? Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I said remind me in six days, so it hasn't been six days yet. How do I sign Kakanyemi you now? I have $12 million, so I should definitely have money to sign him. Where is he? Where are these freaking pricks from Florida? Yeah, but he hasn't signed just yet. I said remind me in six days, right? I better have said remind me in six days. I don't think I have the their picks anyway, so... 
we should yeah cockney is still here so why doesn't he appear on our yeah we don't have those draft picks from them yet we still have three first round picks sorry we only have yeah we still have three round first round picks two second rounders three thirds four fifth five fourths two fifths so yeah we're good we're we're definitely good with draft picks, but I'm just wondering, where do I go to sign Kakanyemi? Or is it just going to remind me in six days, like I said, like I told him to? Can I not sign him beforehand? Let's see. RFAs. These assholes, man. I cannot believe it. These a-holes. All right, you know what? Let's just simulate a couple more days. I don't even know where to go, guys. Um, where do I even go for this? Like, Pending free agents, free agents, view contracts. I already tried view contracts to look for Kakanyemi or center of the future. Glad I went up to an 82, but yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know where to go, to be honest. I'm just going to um, advance a couple, one more day. Okay, Lukanen accepted, Colin accepted. Uh, shit, I don't even know where to go. Yes, you pull your RV has been freaking offered an offer sheet. Are you kidding me? First and the third. Remind me in six days as well. So we have, and Cal Foot has been offered some more money. Are you kidding me? So we're completely getting destroyed here. I wouldn't want to lose Calfoot for a second rounder, so 2.79 for three years. So I'm getting, I'm gonna get reminded for all, for all. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. What was that? I declined it by accident, but uh, let's see here. Okay, now is your last chance to respond to the offer sheet that was tendered for Jesperi Kakanami by the Florida Panthers. They offered 10.360 million dollars for six years. You currently have the salary cap to match your offer. If you wish to retain his services, you must decide now. So we're going to match the offer, guys. We have $12 million. We could have gotten two first-round picks, a second and a third, but I'm definitely not going to do that. Screw you, Florida. I can't believe they just did that. And those other two teams, Pittsburgh and those other assholes from whatever team. Uh, I don't even know what team that was, but they offered... A lot of money as well. So Kakanyemi is our highest paid player at 10.360. We absolutely got sewered here, guys. But I obviously took a chance and we definitely got sewered. So uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I wanted to show you quickly the player that we got, Karostin. Vladimir Karostin, I think. Or Valerie Karostin. Top six high. He should be a stud, I think. He definitely should be better than Domi. We did lose a couple uh, young players as well and a first round pick. But you know what? The first round pick is not too important in my opinion. Uh, now we need to sign or we need to make room or money for one of those two players. So we only have $2.470 million. So uh, I may just try and make some, make some uh, cap space. For whatever his name is, uh, Kakini, not Kakinami, uh, Pull URV. So if I tried Pull URV's rights before, where is Jesse Pull URV here? His value is not that high, but if I trade Pull URV, could I get like a first round pick for Pull URV services? If we send him to the desert, let's see. What I'm what I need is like a young player though, that's the thing. Valen, medium elite. Alex Nylander, Booth. No, we need like a medium elite player, so none of those guys are gonna do Matthew Kachuk. I mean, we only have two point something million dollars, and I don't know how much money those guys were willing to offer. Xavier Hamilton, you guys remember this guy? We traded him to get Dougie Hamilton. Kind of got screwed there. Let's see, has he played in the NHL or was this the AHL? 36 points in the AHL. Not bad, to be honest. 
very, very good. Uh, just trying to see if there's anything I can do to sign. Uh, pull Yarvir, I can even maybe trade him for something, but it needs to be something good. It can't just be one of those these players that are 60 or 70 overall. I need the player that's high 70s that's going to turn into something good this year. You know, so <clears throat> nothing in Dallas, nothing really. i got to look at forwards, actually. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, forwards, nothing here. Edmonton, we just traded uh, Domi there, so no. Florida, these assholes. I don't even want to trade with them. Let's see. Can we even sewer them or something? No, they don't even have anything. That's no wonder why they wanted to get Domi. Uh, I'm not Domi. Um, Kakanyemi. Francois Lacroix. Isn't, I think this guy was one of our, the players that we picked. Or no, maybe it was we were going to pick him, but we didn't end up picking him. Seth Gilroy. Um, crap, like I don't even know where to go. I'm going to actually try and find something and I'll bring you guys back. So give me a second. All right, guys. <laughs> Beating around the bush a little bit here, but I want to get rid of uh, a couple of these guys that are our AHLD men. Philip Myers and Segan Thaler. Let's try and trade them. Her fourth and a fifth. That didn't work. Maybe a fourth. Trade accepted. Perfect. All right. So we have 38 contracts. I don't think this will even increase our... Um, what's it called? This won't even increase our cap space. Yeah. So you know what? The, the issue that we have that's definitely killing us right now that's not letting us basically be a dynasty right now is Carey Price's contract. Carey Price makes $10 million a year, but I don't want to trade him, guys. He is an icon of this franchise. He just won the Stanley Cup. Look how low his trade value is, though. Franchise exact, so he's still good enough to be a franchise goalie, but he makes $10.5 million a year. He's 35 years old and he can decline any time. But right now he's not declining and I don't want to trade him. Like I said, I think that him and Odin Jerk might, might be able to help us repeat this year. So I think I'm going to stay the course, keep Odin Jerk in price and have Frolov and Lukanen as far as backups. I'm mean, not as far as AHL goalies and then Gleason will be our project that will be a stud of a goalie in the future. Even Frolov as well. Look at his trade value. But yeah, I'm not going to trade Carey. Um, as far as uh, the highest earning D-man, we have a 7.825 and then a few $5 million a year contract um, D-man. But I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is definitely Carey Price's contract. Our, our D-core has $15 million. He has $20 million. Probably 20, 27 million, 27.5 for one, two, three, four, five. For five, Cal Flood would be another, another um, two, three. I think another three million. So that would be 30 million for 60 men. I don't think that's terrible. Um, we have these other guys here. Eklund, that's the player that we got. He's still on his entry level, 76. He may be a, bit, a little bit worse. He was picked first round. Did he play in the NHL this season? Yeah, he played in the NHL this season, but hopefully he can grow. We're praying that he grows, honestly, but he may not. So if we lose Cal Foot, it may not be the end of the world. Cal Foot is a two-way defender. Obviously, I wouldn't want to lose him for the second round pick, though. This guy is a defensive defenseman, so we might have actually ruined, ruined it and traded for the wrong guy. I didn't really want to trade for defensive D-man, but uh, yeah. So I think our decor is not the problem here. 27 or even uh, 30 million for 60 man is not awful. As far as our forwards, though, obviously signing Kakanyemi to a $10.360 million a year contract is definitely terrible, but we had to do it because otherwise it was he was going to go to Florida. Sagan yeah, makes a lot of money as well. Sagan might be a player that we look to trade, but he's so good still. 
I don't want to trade him. Look, he scores 45 goals. I was also thinking of maybe trading him, but he scores 30 goals every season. Basically a point-per-game player. Playoff stats are also amazing. The point-per-game in, in the playoffs. So, I don't know, guys. I think he is not the issue. Forsberg, we could trade him, but like we literally just signed him last year, and he helped us win the Cup, 8.455. I think what I should have done is sign Kakaniemi to an eight point something million dollar contract that he wanted and just uh, close the books there. But we definitely messed up. Uh, Jonathan Duran, 6.7. Suzuki, pull your RV, 3.3. So we definitely need another two million um, as far as our. Um, as far as our four, or as far as our cap space, but if you take a look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven forwards out of our twelve that start that make over one million dollars. The rest make less. So we we have a lot of rookies, guys. I think, like I said, the contract that's screwing us over is carry prices. And I didn't want to give up um, Odinger because I know he's going to be our starter as soon as price goes down and we, we have to trade him. So <clears throat> we are just kind of screwed because our, our offense doesn't make that much money either. Like other than these three guys here, our highest earner is 6.775. And that's only four more players that make over $1 million. So... Hopefully you guys get this. It's uh, it's kind of messed up, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a messed up situation that we're in right now. So these, this is gonna be your first line here: Sagan, uh, Forsberg, and Jonathan Duran, Kotkaniemi, Glebov, and Karostin will be your second. No, I'm sorry, Kotkaniemi, Suzuki, and Karostin will be your second. Glebov. Um, uh, who should we let me see? Let me take a look at their overalls actually instead. Sagan, Forsberg, Drenner, first line, Kokaniemi, Suzuki, Glebov can be your second, or even that other guy that we got from Edmonton. Pool URV, hopefully, you can keep him. Lundestrom, Laxon in our third. Baldwin, Dubnik, and we just need a fourth line player here. Yeah, because Karosin is going to be another player that we have here. We traded Ryan Paling, unfortunately, so tough decisions here for sure. If we lose Pooley RV, we're basically screwed here. Um, so I don't know what to do, guys. I literally don't know what to do. I was thinking maybe, like I said, trading Pooley RV and Calfoot for something better. Someone that doesn't make a lot of money. Where is he? Yeah, foot and pull your RV. So maybe to the Flames. Do they have anybody that's doesn't make a lot of money D man wise? Yek him off. What is he? We don't know yet. Did he play in the NHL this year? He did. So Yekimov might be a player. Dimitri Yekimov. Val Mackey. Alvara. Alavara, I mean. So these guys have a lot of actually young demons. So Yekimovs, or even want a couple of these guys. Who is worth the most? Let's see. Yekimovs, Alavara. What's Alavara? Two-way defense. Mika Alavara, Matei Yurchina. So they base these are basically the same players, guys. Alavara and Yurchina. Or Yekimov. I'm leaning towards maybe Yekimov. He did play in the NHL this season. 21st overall. Did Oliveira and Yurchina play in the NHL this year? They didn't. Mika, Oliveira. Maybe I'll trade Ali I'll trade a foot for Oliveira, honestly. Foot is a low lead. He uh is it I like it I like him a lot to be honest, good two way D man but he's we're gonna lose him for a second rounder so he had six points last season he didn't really simulate as well as we want him to wanted him to I'm sorry 
But, um, yeah, I think we're going to trade him. He's going to have to go. Otherwise, we're just going to get a second-round pick, and he's going to get offer sheeted. So if we offer them... If we offer them a seconder... If we offer our first round, and we, we'll still have a couple more picks. So Calfoot and a first for Alavera. They have the cap space. They can definitely sign him. Uh, are you kidding me? They can definitely sign him. Let me see, actually, if they have other. We may not even have to include a first rounder. Let's see here. Valimaki, Yakimovs, Kemp. But Kemp makes too much money, I think. Power forward. I don't want a power forward, to be honest. Nokimov. Two-way forward. I, I want a sniper or a two-way forward. Watt, sniper, seventh rounder. What has he done? AHL, no. He doesn't produce, so. I think Oliveira's. He might be the best player. But when would we have to sign Oliveira? In two years? Yekimaz, we'd have to sign him in two years as well. We don't know what he is, but he did produce decently in the NHL. He took a lot of shots. I see his takeaways. Giveaways, takeaways. He actually did have a lot of takeaways. I mean, a lot of giveaways. He has played two years in the NHL, though. Man, this is, this is bad. Like, not bad, but, like, this is a big decision here. Oliveira did actually tore, tear it up there. Um, I think I'm going to go for Oliveira, honestly. Yeah, Oliveira. Enough of me second-guessing myself. Oliveira. Actually, I'm going to add him at a second rounder instead. So then Oliveira and that other defensive Swedish guy can fight it out. Uh, we'll do the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, second round. Foot and the second rounder for Oliveira. Would this go through? Trey rejected. Okay, so Callum Foote currently has an outstanding offer sheet and is not available for trading at this time. Crap. So he won't even be able to trade. Oh, shit. I know I know what that means. And Okay, so I think we're just going to have to let um, whoever, I think it was Pittsburgh, sign him. And then we'll go back and circle back and offer maybe a couple, or first and a second for Oliveira or something. Wow, what a what a crap! Or maybe two seconds or something for Oliveira. But yeah, what a shit show, guys. Um, I'm not even gonna be able to sign. I won't even be able to sign. What's his name there? Um, Pull URV either. So we made that big trade. We included that medium elite goalie for uh, Pull URV, and he gets offer sheet, and we don't have enough money to sign him. So. That's just so unlucky, in my opinion. Um, I don't think I could do anything else, guys. I honestly don't think I can do anything else. This is this is devastating here. The thing is, though, that Pulley hasn't been a bust completely, but if you look at his trade value compared to these other prospects that we got... Like, like Glebov, uh, Caleb Bryan, Brune, Karostin, even, Hamus, Shrimp. Like, he's a medium elite, right? Even Suzuki's higher than him. Julius Honk is higher than him. Bode Wild, Ty Smith. Like, his trade value is just not up there. I think he might just stay at 85, to be honest. So, I think we're just going to be screwed and have to... We're going to have to trade the picks that we get for Pull Yarby for a medium elite... And a younger medium elite player, honestly. I think I'm just going to have to do that. Just really devastating. But, yeah, Kakanemi accepted. Perfect. We knew that. That was going to happen. <coughs> but, yeah. Uh, Jesse Pugliarvi. Yeah, this is, again, the offer sheet submitted by the St. Louis Blues is being resolved now. You do not have the cap space to match their offer. You will not be able to retain this contract. Given the salary they submitted, you will be receiving... Uh, two draft picks as compensation of first sec uh, first and a third for this year. So St. Louis is going to get Paul Yarvey. We're going to have to take the compensation, guys. And then same for this guy, uh, Cal Foot 2.79. So we're screwed. We did get uh, first, a second, and a third for both players. But that's I don't think that's enough. But you know what? What, what can we do, right? We have to sign. We have to trade, I mean, uh, those guys. 
we have to trade for those guys. I mean, uh, Alavera first. Hope he is uh, two. I think it was three bars or two bars at a seventy-seven. Let's take a look again. Alavera three bars at a seventy-seven. Yakimov two bars at an eighty-one. He most likely is worse though. And then Kemp, I think he was a power forward, and yeah, I don't want a power forward. He doesn't even produce. So Oliveira is going to be the player that we get. And then we are going to just going to offer picks, guys. Uh, I have a crap ton of picks here. St. Louis is actually pretty good, though. So a second, and Pittsburgh second. We'll do these two seconds here. Will this go through? I don't even think this will even go through. Trey rejected is woefully insufficient. So if we add a prospect, I don't want to get rid of any of these good prospects that I got. But yeah, this is a guy that he would be fighting against. Eklund, 76, 21. He's still on a minor league contract, I believe. Yes, for another couple years or maybe one year. Uh, I think he did play in the NHL this season, though, which encouraged me to get him. Uh, he had eight shots. And then his giveaway to takeaway ratio wasn't too bad. I mean, this one is two to yeah, it's two to one, but like he, it's a small sample size, so I'm not gonna include any of these guys. Maybe Austin. Yeah, Austin is a guy that I'll include. Austin in the two seconds. He's a low elite, sixty overall, so he's not gonna sixty six. She may he may turn into something. You know what? I'm gonna actually include Sagan because we did trade a couple. Um. Yeah, trade. I'd say again instead. We did add. Uh, I think it was Pritchett, who was a seventy something overall low elite, or medium top four or something. So say again in two seconds for Alavero. This go through. Trey rejected. Are you kidding me? Okay. Um, if we do our first and say again, let's see if our first would actually be better. Or Washington's no Washington. I think they might be able to do something in the playoffs. So, I mean, this they might actually choke. I think that's what I meant to say. Uh, so yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. Maybe Eakin and when did we pick Eakin? This did we pick him last this season? Yeah, fifth overall sniper, Sagan and. Sammy Gagne, why not? Hopefully this goes through. Trey rejected, you're quite far off. Sagan in a first for Oliveira, would this go through? So they're not particularly interested in what we're sending them. So first, a second. They have to say yes to something here. First to second. Colorado second, let's see. First and a second for Alavera. This should go through. Trade accepted. Okay, we'll see you out on the ice. So we did trade Alavera, unfortunately. I mean, we did trade for Alavera, which is good, but we traded our first and a second. Not exactly what I wanted to trade, but now we got, hopefully, a replacement for Cal Foot. Him and that other Swedish guy will fight it out. Now we have to trade uh, another first. and Yeah, definitely another first and a second. And a prospect for um, hopefully a young stud, medium elite, or something forward. So I'll, I'll try and find someone. And I'll bring you guys back. So give me a second here, guys. All right, first and foremost, guys, I wanted to show you what our lines would look like if uh, now that we don't have RV and foot. So it would be first line, Sagan, uh, Forsberg. And uh, Forsberg went up to an 89. I don't know if he was an 89 before, but... He, Sagan, Forsberg, and Jonathan Drouin. Uh, second line would be Kakanyemi, Suzuki, and who would be this other? Either Glebov. Let's just say Glebov for now, just for the sake of the video. Uh, Lundestrom, Laxanen, who was actually the Calder Trophy winner this season. 22-5-9-1-84. What is he? He actually had insane stats. A sniper. So actually, he's a sniper. So this may actually work out. So we may have our sniper right here. Hopefully, you can grow a little bit. So, that would be your second. Wait, hold up. Let me just do this again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Second line. One, two, three. 
third line. One, two, yeah. So <laughs> it's getting it's getting tough right here. So who do we have in the system? Karostinen. So you would be added to So it would be Dubnik, Karostin, and one more guy that we would have to get, right? Yeah, we'd have to get one more guy. Uh, yeah, we for sure need to get one more guy um, to take Pugliarvi's place. So this is tough, guys. So give me a second. All right, guys. I think I might have found a player that may be a pretty good sniper for us. Uh, Grigory Denisenko. I remember creating him. He actually takes a lot of shots. Let me take a quick look at his uh, how many shots he's taking. 285. He takes a lot of shots, whether it's in the NHL or AHL. So I think I'm going to get him. But we need to get Calgary to retain a lot of salary for him. Half of his salary. We have to include Sam Gagne because I'm an idiot. And I signed him to a... No, I traded for him because I just wanted to add him. Uh, for that other trade to go through, but he actually has a one-way deal, but we have included a first round pick. Let's see if this would go through Okay, so it's not gonna go through just yet uh, This will put us right against the cap But I think uh, Once we make our moves we should be fine uh, Let me see Push Karev and Sagan if we had these two guys, I think we have it we have them covered now, so let's see if this would go through. Trey rejected. So they'll have to say no to this proposal. So you know what? We kind of messed it up. Um, let's see. So would this even go through? So it's still not enough for them. So I don't think we're going to be able to get Denisenko right now. Uh, what we're going to do is try and get another player here from the Detroit Red Wings. I think we I was showing you guys that I wanted to get him. Uh, his name is, what is it, Teravainen. Oh, yeah, T. Teravainen, to Tommy Teravainen. He scored 13 goals and was it, yeah, the NHL last year, 116 shots. He did shoot a, a 200 shots in the AHL last, see, yeah, two seasons ago. And his takeaways uh, for giveaways is not actually terrible. So I will try to get um, Denisenko later on, but not just not right now, guys. Um, I wanted to also show you, is it Valerie Koroskin that takes a lot of shots? No, it wasn't Koroskin. Koroskin is the playmaker, sorry. The guy that we took, yeah, that we traded for, Laxanen, take a look at how many shots this guy takes. 216 that was top almost top of the NHL it was about top 15 and he won the call there 69 points that would have been the second best uh, point production on our team um, right behind Sagan so we're not going to be able to get uh, that other guy but we will get uh, we'll try and get this um, Teravainen guy Hopefully this works out. Who was it that we wanted to trade Sagan? Where is Sagan here? Yeah, Sagan here. And Priest Tarp. And a first round pick. Hopefully this goes through. We need a player to play with, um, what's his name? On the fourth line with us. So let's see if this would go through. Teravine only makes $1.2 million uh, a year. He is a sniper. So I think... He has the potential to turn into something good. So let's see if this would go through trade accepted. Okay. So we did trade two low elite players, but we got a um, 19, I think top, high top six or medium top six, but that has the potential to be pretty good. So let's see if we can find a couple more um, two way guys here. Yeah, let me go to sort by potential and I'll go by two way probably nothing too crazy actually hey um, yeah you know what I shouldn't go to two way let me go to all and I'll find like the 19 20 year olds I don't think there will be many to be honest so but I'll, I'll give it a try 
This naggy guy low lead actually. You know what? I'll sign him just. Actually, you know what? It's not worth it. I will try and sign two way guys that have that can play in the AHL for us. So let's see. Petty Maroon, Alex Radulov. 80. I don't think yeah, I don't know if he would be worth anything, to be honest. He's pretty old already. 37 years old, even though he's one of my favorite players. This repo guy though, maybe. Uh, centerman. I'll give him one year for two way. Uh, Vladi Sabaka, he's 36 though. Reed Boucher, he's always a pretty good AHL guy. He can probably help us. Maybe bring up Zarnik or no? The, who's this T Boyd guy? T Boyd will sign him for one year. That's pretty good. And then. Sorry, let's see here. Uh, we have three more guys. Um, let's see. Oscar Limbaum is here. Is there any D man that would be willing to sign for the AHL? Because I know we signed. I mean, we traded away a few of their old demons. Stuart Percy, why not? He's 30 years old. <clears throat> this can be another guy. And then Zach Senishin, why not as well? I think he has a pretty crappy potential, but we'll have him as well. We will... I think we'll simulate a few more days here. This is a really long video, though, so... I'm going to look maybe to stop it at the beginning of the season. Rebushi accepted, T-Boyd accepted, Stuart Percy accepted, Senishin accepted, Repo accepted. Okay. Like I was saying, I think I may look to stop it at the end of the season, at the beginning of the season, or maybe one month in, just to see how our team is looking. Let's take a look at the forwards quickly. Forsberg, Sagan, and Duran first line. Kokaniemi, Suzuki, Glebov are second. Lundestrom, Teravainen. Uh, it's another guy. Yeah, Teravainen. Will be another player. Uh, Lindstrom, Teravainen, and Laxon in her third line. Baldwin, Dubnik, not Reed Boucher or any of those guys. It will be this medium elite guy, Karos, uh, top high top six. Karosin would be your fourth line. And then Boucher, Repo, uh, Boyd, Raw. Yeah, we should be fine. One, two, three, first line. Ellis, Gagne, Senishin, Suzuki. We need to get Suzuki better. Uh, Bruin for sure better. He's going to play. O'Brien as well will play. Christensen will play. Eakin will play. As well. Actually, Eakin won't play, but yeah. So let's see how many HL players we got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, Okay, we're good, we're good, we're actually good. <clears throat> and then let's see quickly for D-Man how it's looking in the AHL. So in the NHL, we have Lindholm, Wild, Honka, Smith, top four, or two, Oliveira. And then for AHL, it'll be Fleury, one. Uh, Eklund might actually fight it out for a spot this season. Eklund, um... <clears throat> Well, if Cedarholm signs with us, let's see. What does he want? He still has, he wants a one-way. Lausanne wants a one-way two-year as well. So we would have one, two. One, two, three, four, five. And then I think one of the main rosters, six, Flurry. Yeah, we should be fine. I think this is a team that we're going to get actually start with. Uh, yeah. This is a two HL goalies, and then for the main roster, two NHL goalies. Okay, we're good. I think this is what our team's going to look like. Hopefully, we get some growth, guys. This is exactly what I'm praying for. Progress report, let's see. Uh, I don't know if any of these new guys will appear. Glebov, 9, or 206, Duran, 5, Suzuki, Smith, Lindstrom. So, <clears throat> Nothing too crazy. Brune went up to buy a lot. Farola went up by a lot. Austin. So all these guys. Karostin as well. But we're looking at some big growth out of these guys. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can get that. Get that. Uh, I think I'm just going to simulate 
to next season, guys, and hopefully we get some growth. So I'll bring you guys back if there are any news. Jeremy Lozon actually accepted. I think it was a minor league. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, if I, if I see any news pop up, then I'll bring you guys back quickly. All right, guys, let's take a look at the lines. It looks a lot different than last year. We're missing Domi. We're replacing him with Laxanen, uh, the player that won the rookie of the year last year, like I've told you guys about a few times. Um, third line check in forward right now is his role, but it's only two bars, and his overall of 79 is two bars as well. So we're hoping he's at least 82, 83. That would be amazing. Karostinen also three bars, 75. So this guy we got, it's mainly the guy that we got for Domi. And it doesn't look like he grew too much over the season or over the off season. So definitely he's picked third overall. So he's going to be a good player, but he just is not good enough right now, I think. But we're going to play him in the NHL just to see how he does. Maybe he can be a little bit higher than 76, closer to the 80 overall range. So we can put him on our third or fourth line. Tommy Teravainen, another player that we got. He played in the NHL a little bit last season. 57 games, 24 points. He is he has three bars at 81 overall, so he hopefully is 81, 82, 83, even that would be amazing. He's a third line scoring forward. So we have a lot of these third line scoring forward guys here on our lineup. We also are graduating Brendan New Dubnik, fourth line forward. He is a grinder, so he's definitely gonna be playing here on the fourth line. Shoots right. And yeah, he's gonna be our fourth line, fourth round pick. So yeah, he's a grinder, so hopefully he can grow and be a little bit better than 78. Brian Baldwin, though, I think he's a two-way forward, so he actually is low lead as well. <clears throat> so we can have him here. What I can do also is just move Lundstrom here, Glebov here, and Curl Stone in here on the fourth line. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think I'm going to do that, actually, to be honest, because Lundstrom is a third line checking forward right now. And yeah, he can help. Teravainen and Glebov, so that balance, even though our fourth line is kind of low, hopefully these guys are 80, and Karostin is also 80, so that can help out uh, the fourth line. For our D-man, uh, or D-core, I mean, uh, we have Bode Wild, uh, or Bode Wild, that we don't know how good he is, but he did have really good stats, 30 points last season. He shoots the puck a lot, 212 shots, and uh, his shooting percentage is not where he wants it to be, but still pretty good. I think he's a definitely a top four D man. Uh, we actually took out Hampus Lindholm for now, just because we basically know his overall. He's definitely going to be eighty nine or something, so we're not gonna we're not gonna freak out too much about that. Uh, Ty Smith, hopefully, he can be eighty five, eighty six. We're hoping. Same with Oli Ortio. Honk is most likely going to be eighty five. Eklund only one line top four D man depth D man right now. That's his role, but only two bars, and then his overall is only seventy six. But it's only one bar, so we're hoping that he can be more than 76, hopefully an 80 overall or something. And Mika Oliveira didn't really grow too much over the season either. Three bars, hopefully he can be a little bit better. And then there's, and our goalies are Price and um, Odinger. I'm going to actually edit the lines for the HL quickly, and I'll show you guys. Give me a second. All right, guys, quickly showing you the AHL lines. We have Reed Boucher, Ryan Suzuki, Zach Seneshin. Caleb O'Brien, which is a medium elite on our second line with Brune, who's also a medium elite. So two medium elites here. Uh, one is a sniper. I think the other one's a playmaker or two-way forward. And then Will Binn. Well, actually, we might move Nicholas Raw here. And then Will Binn, Cam Hillis, and then another low elite. And then we just have our fourth line, just basically defensive players. Our decor, we don't have too much except for Terrell Couturier, medium elite. Hopefully, it can grow during the season. We did trade uh, now the other D man that was top four. And then Frolov will maybe be our first uh, string goaltender. As far as the scratch players, we have Koliak. We have a bunch of uh, low elites like Louis Maisonneuve. I think we picked them up in the free agency and Don Koliakovo as well. But they're, we don't know how good they are, so we're just not going to play them uh, for now. So, yeah, that's going to be the AHL lines, guys. And I'm just going to simulate through preseason. And then hopefully we know some overall. So, let's see here. It's not gonna, we're not going to do any in-game simulations. We're going to simulate all the way up to the 30th. Just because I think October 1st is waivers and I want to make sure. We also signed Dalbeck as well. Just as a 
insurance policy for D Core. He was, uh, I think, he was like around 78, 79, so a little bit better than Kale Flurry, who we also have in the NHL as a scratched D man. But it's good to have two D men just in case uh, we get some injuries. So we have we have won three games out of four. I mean the preseason record doesn't really matter to be honest, guys. But finished three and two so far after five games. Uh, four and three. I think we're gonna finish four and three. Uh, yeah, we're gonna finish four and three overall as a record. So let me just double check that I don't need to make any. Any what's it called? Any new roster moves? <clears throat> Just because waiver starts tomorrow, so yeah, we don't really know too much. Uh, Repo is gonna be a forward that we have, just in case. Um, what's it called? For um, insurance policy, Flurry and then Dubnik. So yeah, it's not looking too good. Karost, I mean. If he's still 75 and he's not producing in the NHL, I'm going to have to um, bring him down and uh, put him in the AHL, maybe first line minutes. Hopefully he can grow. But look at the stats here. Laxon in seven points in seven games. That's great news. Uh, Suzuki, six points, always simulates five goals. Laxon, and even though he's supposed to be a sniper, just feeding the puck to Suzuki. Suzuki sniping it. Six points for those two guys. Forsberg here, Kakaniemi, Ty Smith always producing. Uh, let's simulate. Yeah, we, we're not going to send down anybody right now. But like I said, that's my plan. I think Karostin's still in an entry-level contract. So let's simulate all the way up to the first game of the season here, guys. Uh, the season is going to start, I, I believe, as soon as October starts. Yeah, waivers. Actually, waivers are going to be one year, one day before the season starts. Now the preseason is uh, complete. Would you like to assign your pro and amateur scouts? Not yet. I want to do like I've done before. Just um, oh, just simulate one month, and then in the next episode, I will assign all these scouts because I think this episode's been very, very long once again. So... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we don't really know. Oh, we know we do know Tommy Teravainen, those overall, 84. So this is great news. Medium top six, only 20 years old. Um, I can't, I'm not going to see how good he did in the preseason, but he was actually a really good player. He grew a lot. So if we do have to make any changes, I may bring Laxon and down to here or something, but we'll see. Laxanen has actually had an insane chemistry with Suzuki and Kokaniemi, so I may just keep him there. Bode Wild is actually 84, so not exactly what we were hoping. I was hoping maybe 85, 86, but he's only 23, so he has room to get better. Eklund is actually 82, well, around 82. Um, Alvera, we don't know yet, so I may just uh, scratch Alvera for now, just because he's a lower rated overall player. And to start the season, we're going to do this, guys. Um, you know what? I'm going to put Honk on the first line because Wild is 84 and an Ortio here. I think I'm going to do that, to be honest. Let me just quickly check uh, the special teams, and I'll bring you guys back. Give me a second here. The special teams, I'm going to put Forsberg, Sagan, Durant. I might just put... Uh, I'm going to keep Jesperi Kalkinami on the point, but if not, I'll just move Duran down to the point. Ty Smith, I think he's our best offensive defenseman. Uh, they're 57 points last year, so I'm going to give him a shot here on a first-line power play. Suzuki Glebov. We're going to have Glebov here. Um, so let me see who has better face-offs. So if, I'm going to put Suzuki as a centerman, Glebov, and Laxanen who has been playing pretty good with Suzuki. And then Lindholm and Bode Wild. Bode Wild actually takes a lot of shots, so we're going to have him there. And this is the power play, PK here. Didn't really touch too much of the PK because I want to see how good we do. And then the goalies, good news. Price is still a 92, hasn't gone down. So as long as he doesn't go down some more, I think it's great news for us. So uh, let's do an in-game simulation here. First game of the season at the Bell Center against the Buffalo Sabres, guys. First period, one nothing. Tyler Sagan scores on Bobrovsky, fourteen to nine. The shots. 
Let's do a second period. 1-1. One, one. Jeff Petrie, ex-Montreal Canadian, scores on Price. 20-16 to 16 to shots. Come on, boys. 2-1, two, uh, two to one, I mean. Jonathan Duran scores on Bobrovsky, so our first line has been killing it. Two to two, Jack Eichel scores. Are you kidding me? We're gonna go to overtime. Let's keep it going here. Let's find a winner somehow. Thirty-two to twenty-one, the shots. We're dominating, guys. Come on. Is it gonna go to a shootout? It is. We do win. Tyler Sagan scores in the shootout, so we pick up our first W of the season. Let's take a look at the three stars. Bobrovsky was insane. Kalkanemi had two assists, and Tyler Sagan had a goal and an assist. So it looks like our power play was insane. Um in this game because Kakanyemi obviously doesn't play with those two guys. Uh, and then now we're going to simulate one month, like I said. Hopefully we we figure out all these overalls for the whole, for all of our team, basically. Hopefully we can start 2-0 here. We're playing against Detroit at home as well. We lose 3-2. to two. We lose against the Blues in a shootout. Can we beat the Hawks? We do 2-1-1. One, one. Can we keep it going here? Winning streak, we do. 3-1-1. One, one. Let's keep it going against the Rangers in Madison Square Garden. Can we win? We should lose in a shootout. Can we bounce back against the Flames here on the 16th? Sebastian Wolfertson has been injured. I think he's from Laval, so I'm just going to replace the player. Let's beat the Flames. We do 5-3. 4-1-2. -1 Central Scouting has released. I'm not going to look at that just yet. It's the first month of the season. Like I said, can we beat... The New York Islanders, we don't. We're 4-2-2. Two, two. Not terrible, but we got to go on a winning streak here, guys. We lose in the shootout. We're 4-2-3. Sebastian uh, Waldverson has been back, but we need to... I'm not going to stop the simulation. I'm trying to do this... Um, what's it called? This first month pretty quickly. 5-2-3, so... At least we've picked up some points, but we. I want us to go on a winning streak. Two wins against the Preds right there. That's really good. Can we beat the Canucks? They're a good team. Bode Wild has been injured with back spasms. Uh, we will edit the lines manually, actually. Give me a second here. Let's go to defense. We'll bring up um, Ortio. And Eklund's actually an 80. I don't know what, he, what it said that he was before, but not terrible. Ortio went up to an 84, so he's slowly getting better. And Ty Smith went up to a 85. So hopefully he can continue to get better. He's only 23. Or two is only 21. Honk is 27 now. He's he's uh, stuck at, uh, what's it called, 85. But that's not terrible. So this is what our, line, or, yeah, our lineup is going to look like. Uh, let me take a quick look here at the power play. I will add maybe... Um, Actually, I'll add a D, man. Yeah, I'll just add Honka, to be honest. I'll just add Honka for everything. Julius. Get in here, Julius. Extras. We will have that young guy. I forget his name. Oliveira. All right. So we lose in overtime. So we're 6-2-4. and four. Let's see where we're sitting in the standings first. We are, what the hell? We're first in the in our, the Atlantic, actually, with 16 points. We've played more games than the rest of the teams, though. But it's looking good. Forsberg's actually killing it. Let's take a quick look at the individual stats first and foremost. So Forsberg, great news, 12 points. Kokaniemi, 12 points as well, all assists. Sagan, 8 goals, 11 points. Laxanen, still killing it. So this guy's actually 86 overall. He's a stud. I'm so happy we got him. It said 79 when we, when he had like two or three bars. So this guy is a true second liner. He definitely is better than Domi already. And he's playing really good with Kakanyemi. Jonathan Durant, 10 points. Suzuki, 8 points. Ty Smith, 6. Teravainen, 6. Glebov, 5. Lundestrom, 5. Bode Wild, Karostin. How good is Karostin? 77. How good is Baldwin? 78. Dubnik, 83. So Dubnik is 83. Is he the grinder? Yeah, he's a grinder. So our team is actually looking pretty decent. Let's take a quick look at the edit lines screen. So see, let's see how, how our team is looking. We have a good young team, guys. So 
I know I had to make some tough changes, but I think our team is looking really good still. First line, two 90 overall players and above and 188. Suzuki Laxinen, who's a complete stud. I'm so happy we got him. And uh, 86 overall sniper. He's only 22. He's going to get better. Kakanimi, 23. This line is a basically kid line, and they're all 85 and higher. And they simulate so good together. Teravainen, 84. Pretty good player. Top six. Lundstrom, third line scra er, scoring line forward. And Glebov as well, medium elite. Hopefully this guy can continue to get better during the season. Brandon Dubnik, though. <laughs> second line forward grinder. We're not going to get too crazy about him. I think it's his physical stats that are making him so good. His offense is good, too. His skating definitely needs some help, though. He only two bars. His puck skills are good. He's just a weird player, but I think he will do decent. One goal, two assists in the first 12 games. Baldwin, though. If Baldwin and Karostin don't get better throughout the season, I may have to trade for some players. This is what our decor looks like. Definitely not as good as last year. Bode Wild is an 84, and then uh, Hamilton was an 86, so we lose on there. And then also we're replacing Foot, who was an 82-83 for Eklund. So we'll most likely need some help there on the blue line. And then Carey Price is still 92, and Odinger is 85. So let's see scratched players. Yeah, Bode Wild is 84, and then Flurry we don't know, and Repo we don't know as well. But I think your offense is looking real freaking good, guys. But you know what? I'm going to leave it at this, guys. Uh, we're sitting first in our division. We just got to keep it going. I'm really excited with these young players. It was tough to give away Gallagher, but we replaced him with uh, Tara Vinen. And it was really tough also to get rid of Domi, but we replaced him with that player that we got from Arizona. I believe he won the Calder last year, so... Good news. It was it was tough also getting rid of uh, Hamilton. I think that might have been a stupid move to do. But and signing Bode Wild. I think Bode Wild is makes the same amount of money, and he makes uh, he's two overall less. But he is definitely younger. Hopefully he can get better. Maybe eighty five, eighty six. That'd be nice. If not, we still have him for a few more years. But he's younger. So and Hamilton his contract is ending this season. So let me know what you guys thought of this offseason, guys. I've been recording for over two hours. This is crazy, but it's been fun, guys. And this season is actually going to be pretty good as, as well, it seems like. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.